Um, tell me a little bit, bit about the C40 uh, project. Well, this is, I mean, one thing where I, I just got the view that we were never going to get anywhere on global warming waiting for governments. I mean, it's America blames China and China won't move with America doesn't and India's not going to move with the others and Europe wants everybody to move together. And so we convened a meeting of the, the largest cities in the world, Cairo, Mumbai, Shanghai, Rio, Chicago, New York. Mayors of 40 large cities say, what can we do together? Um, and our purchasing power is enormous. And yes. what we've done is say, we will start to retrofit all our public buildings so they're energy efficient. In London, it will take a decade, mm. I mean, public and private buildings. But we'd reduce carbon emissions 8%. Yes. I mean, and we save money on energy efficiency. We're now working with them to develop a new form of electric light, yes. even more energy efficient than the current energy efficient bulbs. Mm to replace all our street lighting, our domestic and our commercial lighting. Mm. At the moment, around the world, I think about 19% of electricity is used for lighting. Yes. This new bulb we're inventing with the, the other cities, and we, we've now got about half the models that we need, um, would reduce that to 2%. Mm. So you can save the world from environmental catastrophe. And in one sense, for London, it will be unpleasant. I mean, Temperatures in London in August will most definitely mean people die from the heat. There'll yes. be some flooding. But when you look at, you know, Bangladesh might be inundated, perhaps half the land under sea. Yes. When you look at many of the countries around the Middle East, already marginal in agricultural terms, becoming absolutely uninhabitable. Yes. We are facing hundreds of millions of refugees from climate change. Yes. And therefore we have to do everything we can as rapidly as we can to stop making it worse. Yes. Coming back, uh, back, back to London, and uh, I mean, all these initiatives, all mm. these projects that, uh, that that we've talked about today, and that mm. we, you know, when, during our discussions mm. in the past, we've 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 mentioned, um, very few seem to be filtering through to the main man on the street, if you wish. I mean, the media aren't really reporting mo most of this. The C40, for mm. instance. I mean, how many? Well, the C40 was reported around the world, mm. but it wasn't reported on the BBC News. And I mean, it's cringy. the BBC News is quite prepared to give endless amounts of time to any accusations by my opponents and my administration is corrupt and full of cronies and a, sucking up to shake Carrot Darwin. So they all run and run and run. But they don't report that the murder rate's been cut by 28%, crime's been cut by over 20% overall, and that we've got 5% more people um, have switched from public uh, private to public transport, that we've got a 50% a, a increase in bus ridership, all the good news, it doesn't get out. Mm. And much of our media is in the hands of small numbers of very rich and usually quite reactionary individuals. Yeah. Um, and then there's another chunk of the media, I mean, particularly in the BBC, who I think fairly signed up to what we call the Euston Manifesto group yes. here, this small group of former left-wing intellectuals mm. who now broadly have adopted the Wolf of Itz and, and Bush and Cheney line about a clash of civilizations, And of course, they actually hate people like myself more than they hate um, Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden is the enemy they want. You can yes. paint him as a demon. The last thing they want is someone saying, we don't have to have a conflict with the Muslim world. We can have peaceful coexistence. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I mean, they seek to actually get rid of me. I mean, as a, I mean almost a bigger priority than catching Osama bin Laden. Yes. Um, what about Muslims in London? I mean, as I said, they, they constitute, according to surveys, mm -hmm. between 9 and 11 percent of, of all Londoners. Um, they have, I mean, we have in, in, in East mm -hmm. London one of the, if not the mm -hmm. largest Bengali community outside of Bangladesh. Um, what contribution do you think, and over your term, mm -hmm. and, and you've been serving London mm -hmm. for, for more than 30 years now, um, what tangible kind of, of benefit that, that the Muslim community has had in London? Well, I mean, we have basically every nation on earth has got a community here. Mm -hmm. And so when a firm chooses to have its headquarters here, it's got access to a whole range of linguistic skills, cultural skills, market. I mean, you don't have to, you know, if, you're, if you're deciding here, how will we market something in Bangladesh? You don't necessarily have to have a huge operation there. You talk to the Bangladeshi community, you give you a very good steer on all of that. Then you've got the fact that many of our most basic services are sustained by a, the, the various Muslim communities in London, often on fairly poorly paid jobs, not as well, as well organised or respected as they should be. And you see their children now aspiring to be the doctors and the lawyers and the business people and so on. So they've become part of this great big a, world city. I mean, we're still in a position where you're two and a half times more likely to be out of work if you're a Muslim than the average. 
and so there's clearly a pattern of systematic discrimination by some employers. We've made good strides with the police. There are still problems with some individual police officers, but most police now recognise if they work with the Muslim community, they're more likely to keep London safe than yes. if they alienate young Muslim men. Yes. Um, uh, the Muslim community has overwhelmingly mm. um, backed uh, mm. your return to office. Mm. Do you think that's uh, mainly because of, 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 of your service to London and what you've provided mm. for London, or do you think it's the fear of the, uh, fear of the alternative? I think it's both. I mean, I mean, there are, I mean, the Green candidate who's standing most probably agrees with me on virtually all these issues. And I suspect if I drop dead tomorrow, an awful lot of Muslims would end up voting with the Green candidate or the Respect candidate or whatever. Um, but there is also here in Boris Johnson a very backward looking Tory. I mean, you've got David Cameron trying to make the Tory party look more modern and more reasonable. And what Boris Johnson's got is a lot of this, this, was a very, this was a very strange candidacy, don't you think? I mean, it's very, he, very strange very candidacy. I mean, one of our comedians said Boris Johnson's the man to lead Britain into the 17th century, and that's really true. I mean, in a world which is becoming more complex, more interlinked, where you have to regulate, you have to plan, you have to share power and wealth more and more, here's someone who wants to go back to a sort of completely free market approach, let it all rip, um, and who takes quite little inglier attitudes. I mean, it's like really, if only the rest of the world would go away and England could be as it was 60, 70 years ago. And of course, that isn't a recipe for the future. But of course, for most Londoners, I mean, all they've seen is him being funny on chat shows and comedy shows. And we haven't end anything like the rigorous media scrutiny of his beliefs mm. that I'm subjected to all the time. Final question, how do you see the future of London? What, 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 I mean, you've been in office for eight years. I, do, you, do you still think that there's work to be done? Oh, it's a mess. I mean, in a sense, a city like London is like trying to go up the down escalator. Mm. You have to run all the time. The moment you stop, you start going backwards. And the increasing numbers of competitors, we've, we've widened the gap between us and Paris. We've closed the gap with New York. But I look over and I see these great cities emerging in the third world. I mean, I mean, now half the population of the world live in cities. By the middle of the century, it will be three quarters. London's have to going to do a lot more if it wants to continue to be attractive to others to invest. Thank you very much. We wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you.